stirring the coffee with wooden chopsticks in a wooden coffee cup using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started. But first, coffee from a wooden coffee cup. Nice. It's very insulative, too. The ceramic cups would be hot. Actually, too hot to touch. This, no issue at all. I have to get a bigger coffee cup. Wooden coffee cup. Again, I might have to just sit here and drink this and do the whole show just drinking coffee. This is so good today. Holy cow. The difference is real cream. I use real cream. I'm getting to the point in my mustache where everything is going through the mustache. <clears throat> I'm waiting till it gets long so I can sweep it to the side rather than trim it. We'll see how that works. That never worked in the past, but we'll see how it works now. As you can see, it's a little bit later today. The sun is up. I don't have to be at the job at 645. I don't have to be at the salon until about 1 o'clock today to see a bunch of guys for beard trims. One guy is getting a full waxing, which means ear, nose, uh, bridge of the nose, hard wax. We could just tear that off. What else is he going to get? Paraffin hand dip. If you do that once a month, you'll never have dry hands. Never, ever, ever. For those of you that use your hands, if you get a paraffin hand dip, you will have, your hands will not be dry. Let me put it that way. They will not be dry. The way that I do it, it lasts mm, a good three to four weeks. So in between haircuts, you will have moisturized, softer hands. Take it from me. I'm a guy whose his hands are in water, washing my hands constantly all throughout the day, every day. And I have, if anyone should have dry, gnarly hands, it would be me but I don't. I actually have decent hands, nice hands. And that's because I take care of them. And it's intentional. It is. All right, enough of that. Let's get started. <clears throat> Here's a cold remedy. In a blender, put garlic, onion, cinnamon, curry, and honey. You drink a cup of it, and then the rest of it you spread on your chest. Will it prevent a cold? Mm, yes because you'll smell so bad that people who have colds won't come near you. Now, I'm just... I'm kind of poking fun at home remedies that I have done a million times where I've steeped things in hot water and mixed things up only to, like, gag. Uh, and, you, and if you're on Facebook, you'll see all these little things pop up about natural remedies, and some of them are pretty funny, I think. Never criticize anyone until you walk a mile in their shoes. Because that way, you're a mile away and you have their shoes. I did not make that up. I, I forget where I saw that. I thought it was the funniest thing. A 1970 Ford F100. Not my favorite truck. My favorite truck is a 1960. But 1970 F100, inline, six-cylinder. I like them completely stock. I don't want it raised. I don't want it lowered. I don't want big wheels. I don't want chrome rims. I want the original dog dish hubcaps that just go in the middle of the wheel. If I ever modified one, if I ever got one and modified it, I might put a slider rear window in it just to keep the airflow going. 1960 to 1970 were great years for Ford trucks. If you just Google 1960 Ford pickup trucks, there's a style there. The grills are beautiful. The dashboards are beautiful. And we lost all that. Again, another thing that I have to turn back the hands of time to enjoy design. Whoever said it's a good idea to stay in touch on social media with your former high school and college mates, please punch yourself in the face. Thank you. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created. Creating is what God did. Creating is what God put in us. 
He made us to create, to build, to construct, to take ideas, to bring them to fruition. This is why I believe entrepreneurialism is so special. Entrepreneurialism is godly. The dehydrator running in the shed for 10 hours actually warms up the shed quite nicely. Let me show you what I did. Hold on. I took a rump roast, cut it up, marinated it, put it in the dehydrator, and I learned to keep it in a paper bag when you get done drawing the beef. The reason is it doesn't get wet. If you put it in a plastic bag like a Ziploc and seal it, then it gets wet on the inside and it just kind of ruins the beef jerky biltong experience. I don't know if you can see this. It's nice and dry. Let me just take one piece. It's nice and dry and fatty. Isn't that beautiful? Mmm. And this is right here. This is probably meals for two days. And I took a four pound roast and cut it up into chunks. Not strips. Not really big, thick things either. I mean, it's dried through and through. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And the marinade. <laughs> the marinade is the best that I've ever done. And I'll share the secret in the upcoming course that I'm putting out. It's going to blow your mind. And I experiment with different marinades every time. I do not look for other marinades. and I experiment with things and I write things down. You are going to absolutely go crazy for this marinade. It'll probably be one of your favorites. Yeah. but So this is my meal for two days. I have a whole bag of this. Probably there's two pounds of it in there. I mean, just so good. So good. What I would do differently now is I would, let's say this is a piece of raw beef. I would take this on the cutting board and I would take the meat tenderizing mallet that's got those little nubs on it and bang each piece to break up the fibers. That's what I would do. That would make it easier to chew. That's the only thing that I would do different. Okay, onward. Again, coffee through the mustache. It got to the point when I was, uh, when I had the huge beard which everything kind of covered in my mouth, that I was drinking everything with a straw. And that was gnarly. I mean, you go somewhere and you drink from a straw. I like, you know, when I used to drink beer, I used to like, like drinking from a pint glass. And then I had to switch to bottles because I would end up with a beer foam mustache on my mustache. And the, it didn't bother me as much when, uh, when my hair was dark, the, the food and the drink on my stash, but when my hair turned white, you just end up with like a coffee colored mustache, which is disgusting. You end up with, like when my hair was black, you couldn't tell that I had um, like ribs. Like now if I have ribs, I would look like Heath Ledger's Joker, like with this red stripe going across my, my face, which is pretty gross. Gross looking, not gross tasting. If she's not sending you alluring pics, notice I didn't say sexual. I said alluring. Who is she sending them to? The more you keep being fed by mainstream media, the less your brain works on its own. I have unlimited topics, unlimited content, and unlimited curiosity because I don't watch the news. I don't watch television. I don't listen to radio. And I don't read any rags, any newspapers. What do I read? I like Coastal Living magazine. I like Garden and Gun magazine. I like the recipes. I like looking at architecture. I like looking at the decorating. I like looking at different kinds of guns. I like looking at uh, ideas for front porches, back porches, and decks. I like looking at architectural plans for nooks and cabins and little man cave kind of things. So that's what I like looking at. But I can't stand mainstream programming. Can't even listen to it anymore. P.D. Mangan posted a article from the BBC that said vitamin D could stop the colds or 
flu. And the quote was, it is more effective than a flu vaccine. Hmm. Haven't I been saying that? Well, BBC might be onto something there for the first time in a hundred years. Personal philosophies evolve. They evolve. And that's cool. Totally cool. And with that, finish your coffee in your wooden coffee cup. And I'll see you tomorrow on the Daybreak Show.